However, I have some good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is I'm no longer going to present this in a format that you've been used to, which is tracking every single thing, every single day, strike price, income, so on and so forth. Um, for many reasons, um, you know, mainly the main reason is I'm just not as motivated and, you know, it's not become, it's not as fun as it used to be. Um, you know, I have a lot more fun tracking the yield max funds. These funds, you know, again, they have daily transactions. They sell puts daily. So it becomes a little bit, a bit much. I'll just say that, that, and I don't, you know, there's three funds and I'm trying to squeeze it in, all, get it done all on the weekend. And what I'm doing is I'm rushing it and it's, it's causing error. It's causing poor performance. It's causing lack of motivation. But in summary, it's just, you know, I just, I got to stop doing it. But the good news is that I'm going to still track these a different way and I'll show you, you know, what I'm going to do. But first, I just want to explain to you guys how the holdings work, okay? How, how the net asset value is calculated. So let's get into that real quick and then hopefully, you know, the way I present it to you will make sense. So the net asset value is under the holdings. It's the market value. So to keep it simple, the top two items are typically the treasuries. These treasuries are, you know, earning interest. They're just sitting in, you know, again, these are treasury bills that they that expire a certain date um, and earn, earn interest. And then the other, the third one down below is cash. So as new investors jump into this fund, when they purchase the fund, that goes into cash. When investors leave the fund, that comes from cash. So typically, you know, they're always going to hold an amount in cash, especially when dividend date comes, ex-dividend date, because they have to pay us out of the cash. So if they do not need the cash anytime soon, that's when they'll move the money into the treasuries so that that money can earn more money being interest. Now, the last item is the most important item. This is the sell put. This is the outstanding sell put. So as you know, it's zero DTE. They sell options that essentially expire in one day, not zero days, but you get the point. Um, so every day they sell a put and that put brings in premium. Okay. And then this negative that sits on the books, you know, is the amount it would cost to close the position. So the latest position obviously would have been Friday. Um, so this shows an expiration date of Monday. You, you can see uh, year, year, right? 24, then 01 for January, then 29. I assume Monday is the 29th. And then they have the strike price. So again, since they sell a put, if, if the price of the underlying, which in this case is the NASDAQ, because this is QQQI, goes above the strike, then for the most part, you know, this is going to expire worthless. So the market value will go to zero. Hence, our, you know, our net asset value will increase because right now it's a negative bringing it down. And then on top of that, when they close this out, they'll then open a new position. They'll sell an additional put, which will bring in additional premium. And when they bring in that additional premium, that goes into the cash, okay, increasing the net asset value. So why am I telling you this? Well, because I'm going to start tracking this based on the net asset value. You know, not the total net asset value, but the net asset value per share. So right now, again, that's how the net asset value is calculated. So let's go back to the website. So if you look, the net asset value, that amount is shown directly on the website. Um, it shows right here. 277.37 million. Okay. So that is the total of the net assets. The net asset value takes that amount, divides it by the total outstanding shares, which right now it's showing 15, 15,375,000. And then we get 1804. Okay. So what I'm going to track is the NAV, the price of the stock. I'm going to, I'm going to track if it goes up or down each and every day. If it goes up, that means they're earning money. That means that the premium, you know, the, the premium that they sold, I mean, not sold, the premium that they earned was greater than what, the, what it cost them to close it out from the previous day. Because keep in mind, Monday, for example, you know, that we already got that cash. That, that We sold a put, that money went to cash. But now it may or may not cost us money to close the position. So 
either way, we're going to close it because it, it expires. But just let's just say it costs zero dollars to close. OK, so they'll close it and then they'll sell a new put, bringing in more premium. So if that happens, this net asset value will go up. OK, because the net assets will go up. And then obviously, if net assets go up, then the net the nav will go up. Obviously, it's also dependent on these shares outstanding. So if more outstanding shares come in, then guess what? You know, th th we have more, you know, there's a higher number to divide it by. But keep in mind, as more outstanding shares do come in, um, you know, we'll have more cash. You know, that again, as more per people purchase this fund, it goes to cash and then they can play around with, you know, and sell more puts. But hopefully that makes sense. And now, again, I'm going to track this via spreadsheet on a daily basis. Um, and th in this example, this is my spreadsheet. This is going to be pretty much completely automated. The only thing I'm going to put in is the dividend. So as you can see, going from left to right, um, on the left, I have the date, and then I have the, uh, the fund ticker, uh, the income they're earning per share per day, and then the month to date income. That's key because you want to know how much money they're earning per share for the month because when all said and done at the end of the month on declaration date, you know, you want to see how much they earn per share versus how much they're going to pay. So QQQY, they launched, they were about $20.14. So let's go, you know, again, I'll just cover like the first day. So that first day, um, they lost 29 cents. So they sold a put and it cost them more money to close that put than what they had, you know, gained on selling the put the, the following day. Because keep in mind, each day has a closeout and then the next day has a, uh, you know, a new put. So you're going to earn premium on the new put and you're going to pay money on the closeout. If the closeout costs zero, then it's going to be all income. So when you see zeros, that's typically a weekend. So let's let's look at a positive amount. So if you look at like September 22nd, the income we earned per share was 10 cents. So this means we we did good, right? We earned more premium than we lost. So as the positives come in, uh, obviously, you know, that's a good sign. However, the first month was awful, to be honest. Um, we lost 48 cents when it came down to declaration date, but the fund just started and they said, you know what, we got to pay something. So they paid a dollar 10 and man, people were pumped. They, that got the people talking. Defiance funds were like, woo, but a lot of people did not know that they didn't actually earn any money. They actually lost money. So they lost not only the 48 cents, but the nav went down by the dollar 10 that they paid. So, you know, that's why it went down to 1871 for $20, okay? So let's look at the next month. Again, keep in mind the yellow column because that's the month to date because every month I'm going to reset it to zero, right? Because it's a new starting point. All right, let's earn, baby. Earn, earn, earn. And let's get to the next month, the next declaration date, okay? The next month, how do we do? Terrible. Again, they lost 32 cents. However, they said, nope, we're paying out money. So they paid out a dollar, okay? You know, again. Should they have done that? Maybe, maybe not. But this is an income fund. What they're going to do is they're going to pay you no matter what. It's, it's just a matter of how much. Because people invest in these, you know, mostly for income. They're, they don't invest in it for capital gains. You know, it's, it's not, people live off of this money. So that being said, that's why they paid the dollar. Okay, so things will get better. Watch. Okay, so next month, look at that first day. Boom, 12 cents. Okay, the next day, boom, 12 cents. The next day, eight cents. So already, you know, within three days, they made 32 cents. So that just shows the power, you know, of this of this weapon here. We'll call it the weapon. It's an ETF, obviously. So let's just scroll through to the next declaration date, row 79, the deck date. Um, 96 cents, amazing. So in one month, they made 96 cents per share. Again, that's based on the net asset value, which, you know, shows cash, treasuries, and cur you know, current outstanding um, you know, transaction open for the sell put, and they divide it by outstanding shares. So it's all relevant. But you know, again, to keep it simple, let's look at the price. The price is typically equal to the NAV. So the price was 18.45, so that means they earned 96 cents. They only paid out 93 cents. So all those months where they've been burning our capital, they put three cents back into it. So I, I take that and I looked at, look at that as a positive. But let's, say, let's keep going. Let's see how they did the next month. Moving on, moving on. 
Okay, deck date, they earned about 69 cents per share and they paid about 62 cents. So they pre preserved about seven cents uh, per share. Again, really good, good job. It doesn't make up for what happened in the beginning. As you can see, you know, if it did, we'd be at $20, okay? But it, you know, the damage was done, it's okay. It's okay, that was a really bad month or two in the beginning. All right, continuing on, there, the actual, the next declaration date is coming up on January 31st, but I can tell you up to January 26th, we have earned 31 cents. So, and to be honest, the beginning of this month was absolutely horrible because if you look, okay, boom, you know, we, we started at zero, right? Right off the first bat, we lost five cents on December 29th. And then we lost 31 cents, December 30th. And then we lost 14 cents. We lost four cents. And then we're down 54 cents. It's like, oh my God, we're screwed. But guess what? We came back. Boom, 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 boom. Right in the positive. January 19th, we're in the positive. Positive four cents. Boom, 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 boom. Up to January 26th, positive 31 cents. So you see how good these funds can do and you see how bad these funds can do. But I think it's, you know, they've been staying in that $18 range, you know, so you know, respect to these fund managers, you know, picking the right strikes, doing pretty good, making the best of it because there's a couple ugly days in there. So uh, that's QQQY, by the way, should have mentioned that. And then I'm going to look at JEPY. So from inception, again, the, the JEPY and QQQY launched around uh, September. First month, okay, boom, lost 32 cents, paid 90 cents. Okay, so ouch, JEPY launched at 20 and that's why they went down to 1875. Okay, that's okay. Let's see how the next month goes. All right, JPY, come on, come on. Boom, they lost 17 cents. Not good. And they paid out 91 cents, double ouch. So it brings them down to 1778. Again, the income investors like to see you know, the payment. It doesn't matter if they made money. If they made money, even better. Then we can either stay capital flat or in fact, we can earn capital. But either way, they got to pay. They got to pay us, right? We're living off of this income. So let's look at the next month, okay? All right, green is, yellow is positive. Look at this, 81 cents they made in one month and they only paid out 65. Very smart, very smart. Preserving capital, I like it. So let's look at the next month. Okay, yellow positive, 50 cents. Okay, this month is interesting because they earned 50 cents per share and they paid out 50 cents per share. So that's a capital flat month. That's another good month. Again, if we can stay flat, then we're good. And then obviously the next one is didn't come yet, but where where do we stand? We stand at 25 cents. That's okay. Again, Jeppy actually started out horribly too. In the beginning of the month, if you look, they lost four, what is it? Yeah, we, uh, no, I'm sorry, that was X date. Uh, we lost two, right after X date, boom, we lost two cents. We lost 11 cents. And then we lost eight cents. And then we lost six cents. So the damage was done right in the beginning of the month. But we came back. And now we're sitting at 25 cents per share um, of, cap, of uh, you know, again, this is the gain in the NAV, the gain in the stock price. And typically, you know, what they gain in the stock price is the income that they earn per share. So they're going to want to pay out a portion of that, either all of it or a portion. Let's look at IWMY. IWMY is very kind of ugly. So they launched at 2019. And how that first month do? Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. They made 79 cents. That's really good. Really good. But they paid out $1.25. You know why? They wanted to come out with a bang. They're like, boom, look at this one. Check out IWMY, baby. So they paid out more than what they earned. Okay, that's so that brought down the price of IWMY to $19.91. Okay, how'd the next month go? Do, 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 Boom. Look at that. $1.22. And they paid out a dollar. So they preserved... 22 cents per share. Okay, the last month they kind of what what they overpay? They overpaid by 20 45 cents. This month they preserved 22, you know, cents. So, you know, they made up half of it. That's pretty good. And how are they doing this month? Uh, I can just tell you that now, horrible. So, the the ex dividend date, you can see I reset the month to date income to zero. First day, boom, lost 24 cents per share. Next day, lost 11 cents per share. Fast forward a few days. Happy New Year. We lost 47 cents per share. So we were down 82 cents on January 3rd. I mean, awful. Terrible, terrible. And then it, it just keeps getting worse. We went, we were down a dollar two. And they're now, you know, they're making a comeback. But guess what? 
as of January 26, we're still down 50 cents per share. Man, that sucks. Um, but it is what it is. Um, they're going to pay us. Deck date's coming up January 31st. They're going to pay us. So in this example, IWMY, I see a buying opportunity on X dividend date. And by the way, if you're wondering what's on the right, I do have a comparison of the index versus, no, the index change versus the fund change. Not sure I know what I'm going to do with that, but it's just for reference for now. But this is the new format, guys. Um, this is how I'm going to cover the funds. Again, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm probably going to do it weekly. I'll get into each day for each fund, maybe, you know, a little more detail um, as I go. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. If not, if you like the old fashioned way, if you like the more detailed version, you can go check out Max Convexity. Um, he has some good stuff. He does profit boxes and he actually covers these funds three times a day. Um, so and he, you know, it's a similar format. He does Excel spreadsheets, too. So you would like, you know, the way he does it. But if you like the quick, simple, automated format that I'm doing now, I will continue to do this every single week. And then I will, of course, do it right before de declaration day. And I will give my opinion and best guesstimate of how much they're going to pay us. So um, that's all I got. I just left the gym. I got to go pick up my son. But I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, by the way, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, this video is for fun and entertainment. But if, like I said, if you if you enjoyed this video, uh, just hit that like button. I'm curious to hear your feedback of the new Defiance ETF format. Does it suck? Is it awesome? Is it good enough? I don't know. Just let me know. Because um, this is how I plan on doing it. Because this is how I like doing it. Uh, the other way, it was just becoming, you know, a bit much. And I just wasn't as motivated. I didn't have the time. I did my best to automate it. And long story short, I just, you know, it, it just wasn't fitting, you know, the mold. So, and you, that would come out in the video, honestly. You would see I'd be rushing a video and not having fun with it. Um, so that's no good for me. That's no good for you as the viewer. So, you know, if I do it this way, this is a little easier. And I, honestly, this is a little more fun and basic for me. I want to, I'm just going to keep defiance as basic as possible because they are a little more basic, uh, than the yield max funds yield max. I will definitely keep in the same format, um, and continue to cover them as I have. So anyway, I got to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and, uh, have a great rest of your day later.